Let's talk about the current state of the ReZero series, mainly the web novel. However, before I get into that, there is some anime-related stuff I want to talk about when it comes to ReZero, and it is very important for anime-onlys to be aware of, and kind of get everybody's interest in the topic, because obviously, if you haven't been living under a rock, ReZero Season 3 is coming out later this year for Fall of Anime 2024. So, uh, you know, about six months from now, like six or seven months from now, we're gonna have, like, you know, the continuation of ReZero, which is fundamentally just exciting in every regard, because it's easily one of my favorite anime of all time, and seeing it get a continuation, it just, it really does make me very happy. But now, before I go any further and continuously gush about, you know, ReZero, I want to talk about the news that was revealed earlier today by Ice, aka the individual that gives us pretty much accurate leaks for ReZero, but also is a part of the Witch's Cult translation team that give us the web novel of ReZero, translates the chapters when they come out. So, you know, a very important individual in the ReZero community. They posted this earlier today, talking about the earnings report of ReZero, and pretty much you know, finding out that ReZero is very big, like, in terms of anticipation and, you know, Katakawa, you know's expectations for ReZero, it's pretty freaking high. So, let's, uh, let's get into that. So, one of the big things that, um, this report gives us is that they are, you know, are talking about their overall net sales and operation profits, etc., and they highlight that ReZero, Konosuba, and Overlord are some of the most popular that they're going to be leveraging for this year, and the first thing that starts off is ReZero. That was the first name drop they did, which just goes to show the significance and importance of the ReZero title, because despite, obviously, ReZero already having no anime for the past few years, it still is doing incredibly well in terms of just, you know, promising titles and cells and light novel cells, etc. And, you know, Ice here points it out himself, you know, ReZero is doing exceptionally well better than it technically should, because, you know, there hasn't been an anime for a while. Yes, we have gotten, let's say, you know, a trailer for the anime, and anticipation is there, but even then, when there is a lack of, let's say, ongoing anime, cells, etc., could, you know, dwindle a little bit. But the fact that has not been the case, and, you know, ReZero has remained strong, and Katakawa even highlights it themselves with the report, pretty much lets us know that their expectations for Season 3 is ridiculously high, and it does give me a lot of hope for things to come for for Arc 5 and Arc 6, aka what Season 3 of ReZero is going to be covering. Now, let's um, dive into that. So, this isn't necessarily spoilers, so I wouldn't worry if you're an anime only, but this is something that does need to be mentioned, and I've talked about this in the past, but it is something that is incredibly important for ReZero Season 3 that people need to fully understand, and that is the fact that ReZero Season 3 is going to be one of the most challenging undertakings that Studio White Fox has ever done for the series. And the reason for that is because, as I've talked about in previous videos, Arc 5 is very action orientated. Like, it pretty much feels like ReZero went to a Battle Shonen mode. Like, that's what the arc feels like. Arc 5 feels like straight up a Battle Shonen. And there is a lot of fights, there's a lot of action, and obviously there's been a lot of concern within the community for a while now that, you know, Arc you know, 5 might not get adapted properly. Not just because of maybe the animation arc you know, dilemma, but also in terms of maintaining the consistency of character development and character growth, because, you know, they're going to be having a lot of action going on. It's really hard to kind of balance something like that, you know, character development and character drama alongside of action. There's very few series that come to mind that is able to properly do that while there is just a huge focus on action content. Now, one of the things is, is that obviously the team that has worked on ReZero for the past two seasons, they clearly love, they, they love ReZero, okay? I, I think anyone at this point that has remained anime only or just watched the anime in general cannot disagree that ReZero is a passion project. There is a lot of love poured into this anime, and every time I see, you know, ReZero content, like I see an episode or I think back of a clip, etc., it reminds me just everyone on board on this series really does love 
what they're doing. For instance, it's not just like the staff, like the animation and art team, but it's the voice acting team, the people that do the sound design, the music team, everybody that works on ReZero clearly loves it. And even Katakawa loves it. And, you know, they're a, kind of a greedy business, but it, it, it shows they love it. Like, everybody is on board with ReZero and loves it. And with Ice's, you know, report here, it does let me believe that in terms of production and scale and probably attention and focus, ReZero is probably one of the highest priorities for Katakawa this year in terms of getting ReZero out properly. And if not that, also Overlord, because Overlord is getting a movie this year as well. So there is a lot to consider with that. They also do highlight Oshino Ko, Trillion Game, etc. But obviously the main IPs that they want to focus on is ReZero, Konosuba, and Overlord. And anyone that has been watching Konosuba for this anime season, Konosuba has been fantastic. So it makes sense that, you know, Katakawa, they, they, they want, they want these series to succeed in every way. And I think that judging by how recent anime has been, especially when it comes to major projects, like they're the main focused production project for a studio, usually the anime turns out to be pretty good. Now, obviously there's exceptions, but I do hope that the team that is working on ReZero are given enough time to work on it. And, you know, there isn't constraints, etc. Because there was a lot of challenges that the team had to face when they were working on Season 2 of ReZero, thanks to COVID. So I am anticipating Season 3 looking way more polished, potentially, than how Season 2 was. And I have no problem with Season 2, but there was a lot of challenges that they had to overcome. Now, getting back on topic, though, let's talk about, you know, the expectations, okay? Before I get into the spoiler stuff for the web novel. So, ReZero, in general, at this point in time, the anime... I think is in a good place. I think that season three, at least from the information that's been gathered to the trailers and all that, and what Ice has said to reassure us as well, I'm under the assumption that ReZero season three is going to be good. However, what it's really going to come down to is the pacing, and if the team can remain consistent with the action, that is going to be, like I said, the hardest hurdle for them to overcome. But once they get into arc six, don't worry, no spoilers, that's when they'll be able to have a little bit more of a breather and be able to not have as much action as arc 5 did but then this is where the challenge starts to come into play once we have arc 5 and let's just say arc 5 is a smash hit okay let's say that it is legitimately a phenomenal arc okay they, they animate it beautifully and it reaches a higher highs than we have ever seen for re-zero up to this point in the anime then we're going to be moving into Arc 6, which Arc 6, going to be blunt with you, is my favorite arc. And yes, I'm caught up with the web novel of ReZero. But Arc 6 is still undefeated, in my personal opinion, because just the main themes that take place within it. And I feel like, you know, the shift from Arc 5 to Arc 6 is going to be very dramatic to a degree because of just the fundamental lack of as major focus of action. There is action, but it's going to not be as focused. It's going to return to the roots of what ReZero was throughout Arc 1, Arc 2, Arc 3, and Arc 4. So I am curious to see how the community will react to said change. Now with all that being said, we need to talk about the content that is beyond Season 3 of ReZero. Now, before I get into spoiler territory and I really talk about some nitty gritty stuff, I do want to say that if Arc 5 is going to be a massive hurdle and undertaking for Studio White Fox, Arc 7 and Arc 8 is going to be nightmare fuel absolute nightmare fuel for whoever works on this. I'm assuming it'll be White Fox, but anything could change from now and then because factoring in, you know, when Arc 5 and Arc 6 is going to be getting adapted, that's going to be basically, you know, th this year. And we could assume there's going to be a split core from uh, our understanding from what Ice has said. There's most likely going to be 30 plus episodes. So we could assume that ReZero is going to be spanning into most likely 2025. Like we're probably going to get to see the conclusion of season three, maybe in spring or even summer of 2025. So we're going to have a lot of ReZero to look forward to. However, Arc 7 and Arc 8, if I had to take an educated guess with the, just the time gap and all that between ReZero anime spanning of quite a few years, I'm going to assume we won't get probably Arc 7 and 8 animated until maybe 2026, 2027, somewhere around in there. It's a long time now to really consider when we're actually going to get that. And a lot of things can change, companies can close and fall, etc. Anything can happen right then and there. And so I am curious to see whoever picks up Arc 7 and 8... The undertaking that they're going to have to face is going to be insane. Because if 
Arc 5 focused on action. Arc 7 and 8 mixes a political drama with just nothing but action. It is non-stop action. Like, it's literally going to turn into, like, a brawl almost every single episode. And I am legitimately curious on how that is going to be done with an anime. That is frightening. Because it's like, whatever happens with Arc 5, we're going to get a glimpse of what to expect with these two arcs. And so, if Arc 5 turns out to be phenomenal, oh my goodness. If it turns out to be lukewarm, however, then the concern starts to pop up. But, obviously, I don't want to doom post. I just wanted to mention that before I go any further. So, let's um, let's get into some spoiler territory. So, if you're an anime only, I'm going to give you a disclaimer right now as a warning. I'm going to be talking about spoilers for future content. A.K.A. I'm going to be spoiling story plots, etc. So, if you don't want to be spoiled, now is the time probably to stop the video. And if you do leave the video, I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it greatly. And if you did enjoy what you got to see, you leave a like for the video. Now, with that being talked about in the disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about the current state of the web novel. After now officially catching up with ReZero Arc 8, I'm not going to lie. Top A has really changed as an author. Like, considerably shifted. Like, he is not the same person that he once was. Like, looking at, you know, Arc, you know, let's say going to Arc 3, okay? And then looking at Arc 5, and then seeing what he did with Arc 7 and 8, his improvement in storytelling beats has definitely been different. I think for the better, but I definitely think that it is so jarring the change in his writing style that some people might be jarred by it and might not even like it. But I think it's been for the better of the content of the story. And what do I mean? Well, first of all, what I want to talk about is how Tape Sensei uses Return by Death. I think everybody knows what Return by Death is. I don't need to explain that. I mean, if you're watching this video, you should definitely know what that is. So, the way T Return by Death has been used up to this very point throughout, you know, ReZero, let's say, you know, Arc 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and even 6, it was always used, and we got to see kind of like, you know, a different path that Subaru does, you know, within the story. Like, for instance, let's just think about Arc 3 here. Like, when he went up against, you know, Sloth and died, he would tackle the event in a very different way, and we would get to see Subaru try to do that. We would see, like, a few chapters focus on that, him trying something different. We've seen this throughout Arc 4 as well, Arc 5, etc. We, we've seen this. It's a common theme within ReZero storytelling to showcase Subaru's many different attempts of Return by Death. However, ever since... Arc 6, it seems like, or actually are in the middle of Arc 5, actually, it seems like Top A has wanted to fundamentally slowly shift away from just focusing only on Subaru, but also just focusing on Return by Death, and wanted to expand upon the world's reaction to Subaru. That is definitely what I have noticed since Arc 5, and it's become definitely apparent, and you can't ignore it, with Arc 7 and 8. And what do I mean by this? Well, obviously in Arc 5, if you read it and you know what happens, you know, Subaru doesn't die that much in that arc, surprisingly enough, even though it is a battle shonen, which is just wild to think about. And then Arc 6, yes, he does die quite a few times, but it's still not as focused as it normally was. And then Arc 7 happens. And what normally would have killed Subaru, especially in the beginning section when he was at the forest village, you know, with the, the Amazons, basically, he survived, and his leg grew back, and it showcased that Subaru isn't as easy to kill as he once was. This starts off Arc 7, pretty much, and I think it fundamentally showcases that Subaru and the way, you know, he uses Return by Death is very different, or at least how Tape re uses Return by Death. And throughout Arc 7, and mainly in Arc 8, we see moments to where it's very clear that Subaru is using Return by Death, because, you know, he talks about information he should not know, but we never actually see it it's just implied and I think it's very fascinating storytelling wise having the seeing the characters react to Subaru's knowledge of what's going on and not really knowing what's going on for instance why he knows this information we see that constantly where Subaru is obviously died 
but we don't see him die. It's not even depicted within the story where Tape shows how he died. It's just as clear he has. And I think at this point, it makes sense for Tape to kind of segue into that, because it's like, we understand Subaru's character. He's been developed. There's a lot of characterization for him. We know how his ability works, etc. We don't need to see every single death. We don't. Obviously, some deaths are more important than others in terms of, like, major turning points for the story, but overall, we don't need to see every single death. And so, most of Arc 8, when they're, like, raiding the capital, so to speak, to get it back from the undead, and to stop, you know, Sphinx from basically becoming the new Witch of Greed, we know Subaru's died, it just doesn't show it. I think it's interesting. It's really interesting how he did that. How, you know, he is riding ReZero recently. It's quite a drastic change. On top of that, action. Definitely, thanks to, I think, Arc 5, Tape found a love for action, because he has definitely saturated it within arc 7 and 8. There is a lot of action and a lot of chapters that just completely don't even focus on Subaru or the main cast and you just focus on characters that were introduced so to speak recently and their fights. And as much as I think that this is you know a good thing and expands upon characters I think Tape is really good with expanding upon characters and he does a really really good job with it. I, I, I have no complaints whatsoever for those chapters. I can see why some would not like it. When this finally does get animated, I see people having issues similar to how people have issues with Overlord, and those issues span to Ainz is not much within the story. And what do I mean by that? Well, anyone that reads, you know, Overlord or has watched the anime knows that Ainz kind of takes a back steep. Like, he, he stays back. Like, most of the, the Nazarick you know, NPCs are the ones that really do things, and Ainz doesn't really do much anymore. And, you know, I feel like that's kind of what happens within Arc 7 and 8 a little bit. Not to that drastic of a degree, but it definitely is shifting into that. And so, it's pretty fascinating just seeing the evolution of Tape's writing, not focusing as much on Subaru and just focusing on supporting cast members. I think that, you know, he definitely probably liked doing this, especially within Arc 6 and Arc 5, which is what dri drove him to do this with Arc 7 and 8. Honestly, I like the current state of it. I hope, he, though, he continues to balance character development and action, and he's done, for the most part, really well. You can see his improvement within writing with the, those type of elements within these two arcs, and I like what I've seen. I, I don't know, man. Like, uh, I don't think Arc 8 is over yet, because, like... Obviously, we don't have a conclusion yet to it, but uh, where I'm at right now, basically, with the witch and how she's resurrected, aka the witch of greed, Echidna, pretty wild stuff. Like, I, I, I want to know how that's going to happen, you know, what Rosewall is going to say, etc. You know, what Subaru going to say, you know, Beatrice, all that. It, so many questions. But uh, I'm going to make a separate video later on talking about my thoughts of 7 and 8, like, you know, diving into character moments, etc. But I wanted to talk about the current state of the writing and the expectations for the anime and how difficult it's probably going to be. But I want to leave it at that. Thank you so much. Be safe, stay healthy, guys. I love you. Chibi out.